let's take that. I'm going to I'm going to give you one of the arguments I, I would I would I would hear. Doesn't mean I agree with the argument, but I'm going to give it to you. I ain't dying for these women. <laughs> I ain't trying to protect these women. You know, forget these women, F these women, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I got to give a valid statement. If I can't instruct you, mm-hmm. if I can't tell you from a man to a woman, hey, don't wear those type of clothes because there's danger wearing right. that. Don't be out here doing this. Not every man wants a woman that's shaking her, her thing. There's a value that you have. And because you are valued, I don't want you to be doing 304 duty. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't want you to, you know, do certain things because the end result is not going to be positive. Mm-hmm. But then that woman will say, you can't really tell me anything. You know, I, I got access to, in my 20s, I, I can go on my phone. I got access to all these men, regardless of their economic status. Mm-hmm. So I'm good. Now yeah. you're reaching 30, 40 years old, and that status is gone. But I want to go to the heart of the matter. You got men on one side that's saying, I ain't protecting these chicks. Even in my age group, I'm going, I can't, it's hard to, it's hard to argue that. Yeah. But then you got the black women that's yelling and saying, we're the least protected. And it's like, okay, there is either a language gap or there's a, there's something that's, that's missing. So that's why I say, I'm going to take the ignorant route and say, okay, let me get somebody else who got eyes on this situation. Unpack that. Yeah. I can touch on that. Cause obviously I, I definitely experienced that dating I've dated black women all my life. <laughs> so, you know, I've seen it. Need to hit the bell so that they, they, you know, they didn't say yeah. that one more time. I've dated black women all my life. I don't get it twisted. So, uh, I don't want to do me like TLA talking about to be dating white women. Yeah, you know, but TLA I mean, getting you know, hard, do <laughs> Man, they, 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 they try, they try to, well, it's really only like a couple of them, Tasha K and them, but. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That, but, you know, um, people hear me speak and they hear me talk and I've had a gentleman uh, come on my on my channel and, and say, oh, I bet you date, I bet you're dating a white woman. I'm like, why do you think that? You know, and and because I I you disagree with me, you think you know, and this goes back to what we said earlier, where people try right. to judge you, put you in a box, simply because you have a different perspective. Right. You know, um, oh, you must like white people. I was like, I like everybody. You know, and, it, right. and it's not that I purposely prevented myself from dating white women or other women. I just didn't come across them. You know, or didn't come across one that I, I was attracted to or whatever. You know, I've seen plenty of beautiful women on all sides of the rainbow. So, listen, right. I'm an equal opportunist. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, so, I don't want nobody getting it twisted. I love women, period. You know? Right. So, so it just it just so happened that the majority of women that I, I come in contact with and living in a predominantly black area and things like that, you know, you're just around what you're around. Right. Um, so, to your point, one of the things I always say, regardless, and people don't like when I say it, but it comes to women... Um, and just just people in general, because these these things apply to everybody. You can't protect people who don't listen. And if you if you don't listen, how can I protect you? And so the question is, though, when it comes to women specifically, um, yeah, there are things you know that they they don't want to always feel like they have to fall into this idea that a man knows what's best for them. Right, they they move with a renewed sense of self worth, self value, um, and sometimes they, they might feel like if I'm getting advice or taking this advice uh, from a man from this telling me how I should really conduct my life or move around or what to wear and things like that, that you're in a sense uh, basically saying that you know it's a, it, it comes off as like a form of control. It's how they interpret it. They right. interpret it as a form of control. I, I think. There's a, a lot of miss. There's a lot of confusion, and I say interpret because what ends up happening is you have some women who are giving and relinquishing power to men that are not their husbands, right? And so we we start seeing this confusion where you have men who are just boyfriends, men who are just guys they're sleeping with, trying to give these women advice or tell them what to do or things of that nature, and they're operating out of order, right? They're operating mm-hmm. out of order, and that's where a lot of this confusion is coming from. Why is this confusion happening? It's because it goes back to what we said in the beginning is that who is teaching, right? Who is teaching? 
you know, we talk about submissive, being submissive and things like that. Well, that's, that's a, that is a trait or a quality that's reserved for a woman's husband, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and so yes. <laughs> but, but what ends up happening is people are trying to apply it to this dude you just met yesterday, you know, right. and you're giving him your body, you're giving him access to your temple and for nothing at all. Right. And so, and, and it, there's just so much confusion. Why? Because of the culture. So there are, no, there's people are not following any guidelines. They're not following any structure. They're not following any rules. They're doing what they want to do. Right. This, in my generation, we came up with the Netflix and chill concept. Right. right. That, what part of, what, what cult, that's part of the culture now. Whereas I meet you today, we're out having a good time. I meet you today, I invite you back to my place. And there's a 95% chance I'm gonna sleep with you. Right. You know, and there's no commitment, there's no nothing. There's a, there's a high probability that we're not gonna use protection. So that's gonna increase the probability of one or two things. One, uh, an STD will be transferred, or two, a child will be conceived out of that process. And so, so and these are girls from 15, 16 to up to 30, right? Mm -hmm. 35, almost 40, who are participating in this new cultural concept of dating, mating, and relationship. And so it's dysfunctional and it's causing a lot of issues. And so it's fun. We could say mm -hmm. and argue it's fun, mm -hmm. but the effects, right? The, the blowback from it is extremely detrimental to the community. But we have a, we've a, adopted this thing within our culture and now it's acceptable. It's acceptable to be sexually undisciplined. And so in the moment, it sounds like a great idea. Long-term it has its consequences. And so again, it goes back to, okay, how do you protect that? Well, you tell them that's, hey, this is not a good idea. Oh, okay, well don't tell me what to do. You know, I'm growing, I'm this, I'm that. I'm free mm -hmm. to do what I want to do. Well, I can't protect you when you don't what? When you don't listen. And then you come back and say, okay, well, who's teaching them? Well, you can't teach a student who doesn't want to learn. And that becomes another issue. And so when we talk about the sexual, the lack of sexual discipline within our community, the hypersexuality between men and women, young boys and young girls, you, you see this thing being influenced and sent out through the media, through music. You know, you hear the lyrics in some of these music. You yeah. know, uh, we've taken that censorship out. You have kids that are listening to the, the uh, Meg Thee Stallions, the Cardi B's, the Beyonce's, and then you have them listening to a lot of these male rappers, these Rick Rosses, these Drake's, and all these other little Uzi, whoever. And they're right. talking about what they're gonna do to this young girl's throat when they get back to the house, right? Um, you listen to like uh, uh, 21 Savage. I remember playing his clip one time on my stream, and for a whole three minutes, he talks about one, stopping at some woman's house, blowing her back out, going back on the car, spinning the block, dropping, shooting a couple people in the head, going back around, getting a girl in his car, getting some, some receiving some oral sex from her, dropping her off at the corner because her boyfriend's on the way back home, looking through the gas station, shooting some more black men, going back, looking for some other thought, he's gonna blow her back out. For a whole three minutes, that's the lyric. And the, the evil and the wicked lyrics are all gracefully placed on a very nice instrumental beat. And you're bobbing your head, you're reciting <laughs> the lyrics, and you're, right. speaking, you're speaking death, destruction, and sexual deviance over your life as a child and as a young adult. And then we start to then step outside of our homes and then we start to reenact what we've rehearsed in our minds and that we professed and spoke out loud and spoke over ourselves and spoke over another person in front of us. You know, um, Charleston White made this statement. He made a clip and he said, every black, every gun that a black man carries, those bullets are for another black man. And so when you when you hear things like that, Charleston White spoke, he's absolutely true. You know, right. my brother don't wake up in the morning tomorrow, I'm gonna go shoot me some white boys today. No, right. those bullets are for another black man. And so, you know, these things, we are conditioning ourselves to destroy our own people. And we're doing it through music, we're doing it through entertainment, we're doing it through social media. And it's it's right in front of our face. And then when you go and say, hey, stop that, hey, this is destructive, then we want to say, no, I do what I want to do. And to your point, you can't teach someone who doesn't want to be taught. And that is one of the biggest issues that we have in our culture today. Um, and that applies to the men. And it also applies with the women. Uh, and that's just what it is.